How's it going everyone? You're watching the Green Dream Project and today we're going to go over five things you might want to avoid when setting up your own rainwater harvesting system. Things that you might not necessarily find in books or info on rainwater harvesting systems. Things that uh, you might only learn by experience and trust me I've learned them from experience. Now if you're new here my name's Jim my wife Jess and I, we live off grid in the Arizona desert. So we don't have any wells and rainwater is pretty much our main source of water. It's incredibly important to us. So it's incredibly important that we get the setup just right so we can harvest as much water as possible. Now, over the course of a few years here, I've tried different things, tried some experiments to try and just kind of nail in the system. And I'll kind of go through some of the lessons I've learned along the way. So the first up are the screens. In any rainwater harvesting system, it's a good idea to screen any downspouts or vents, any openings in the system. You don't want debris or insects getting in there. So screens on any openings are incredibly important. Now, the first time we set up a rainwater harvesting system, we put screens right on top of the openings of the gutters. Now, although that would keep debris out of the pipes, I think having the screens right on top of the gutters caused issues because those screens will get dirty real fast. When the screens on top of the gutters got dirty, it immediately blocks the flow of water which caused a huge buildup right inside the gutters. So how we changed that up was adding the screens on top of the pipes or the inlets of the system. Those screens can still probably get dirty, but it won't disrupt the flow from the gutters. If anything, it'll just kind of flow out over the pipe and it won't condense in the gutter so much, causing any issues like leaks or anything like that. It'll keep the weight from building up too much inside there. Now let's talk about sealing the gutters. Sealing the gutters is definitely your choice. There's definitely a lot of sealants out there. One of the most widely available is silicone caulk. And silicone caulk makes a great sealant. But there's just something to be aware of and especially if you're gonna use it for gutters. Nothing sticks to silicone, not even silicone. So if you use it to seal the gutters and it can do a great job, if it does crack and break and you need to replace it or fix it, you really need to get all that silicone caulk off there, clean it up real nice before you can seal it again. You might wanna take that into consideration and you might wanna just take a look at other products that might be available. We ended up using Flex Seal, which has like a high temperature range. When it dries, it's flexible. So we think it'll be a good choice for us. So another thing that you might want to consider, instead of having to worry about all the different sealants and how you're going to seal the gutters, is maybe go with seamless gutters. I don't know if it would have been possible to get someone out here to do seamless gutters for us. So we ended up going with the individual steel gutters. But if you can get that service, it might be the way to go. It'll definitely be a larger initial expense, but you won't have to worry about the different sealants and repairs and everything like that or leaks it might be the way to go and you can be sure you'll catch all that water so another thing to take into consideration and this really might only apply if you're building your own rainwater catchment versus if you already have something on the property but my design on this roof is kind of unusual. Now I was working under certain design constraints at the time, so it's kind of an oddly shaped roof. This thing is 110 feet long by 20 feet wide. This causes some certain issues, and it might be something you want to take into consideration if you're planning your own catchment, and that is slope. Uh, it's a good idea to get as much slope as you can so that the water runs to exactly where you need to as quickly as you need to do it. We weren't able to get quite the slope we would like. You know, it's tough to get that slope on those gutters going such a long distance. So in order to combat that, I've added extra drainage on this roof. Five downspouts. When I did it before, it only had two, which 
did okay, but I think it caused a lot more stress on those gutters, causing much more leaks over time. So I'm hoping with the five downspouts that it drains that water so much more quickly and we don't have so many issues. Again, if you can get a good slope on your roof or your catchment, all the better. Things you don't have to worry about then. So in a previous version of this system, I had to get water from our roof over here to our poly tanks. And I tried doing a wet system before, but I had so many 90 degree angles, and there were seven. That combined with the lack of drop between the roof and the poly tanks, I think the water just didn't have the right flow. It was going into the poly tanks, but not quite fast enough to not get a backup over here at the roof. So this new setup we have has five 90 degree angles and I think it'll be okay. One of the changes I made was going from these sharp 90s, which might still be okay if you have a very simple system. You might be able to get away with this. Since I have five 90 degree angles and my drop isn't the greatest of drops, I ended up using these sweeping 90 degrees. That'll give much better water flow throughout the system. If you have a sharp 90 like this, it's really gonna cause that water to stop and jolt. With this, much better water flow. Just something to consider when designing your own system. Last but not least, and I think this one can be important if you're doing a lot of DIY projects, is keep it as simple as possible. Now again, this is not the best design, but we had much different design considerations when I was putting this together. So, you know, our roof is over here, our poly tanks are back over that way. It presents quite a bit of a challenge. So yeah, just keep it as simple as possible. So I have like 110 feet of pipe going along this roof, going down, underground, over to our cistern, and then over to our poly tanks. Not the most efficient water flow possible. But one day if we ever stop needing the poly tanks, the system will dump right into the cistern. Much more simple, much more straightforward. So you know, if I can recommend it, if you're designing your own system, get that water storage as close to the catchment as possible. If we had a water storage tank right here and the roof dumped right into the storage tank, you know, that would be ideal. The water would get in there very quick, efficiently, no problem. Just something to think about when designing your own system. Keep it close, keep it simple. So we're really passionate about rainwater harvesting out here. We're passionate about catching it. We're passionate about soaking it on the ground where the, the storage matters most, into the, in the soil. We've done a lot of reading. We've done a lot of research on rainwater harvesting before we even tried this. But there's always tidbits like this that can't always be included in any kind of books or things like that. Just mistakes that we've made along the way that we wanted to share with you just to make the best system possible but we think rainwater harvesting is so incredibly important. It's definitely a passion of ours. It's something we wanna share. So there's a ton of information out there about rainwater harvesting. We definitely recommend checking out Brad Lancaster's books. It's just a font of information if you're looking to start your own rainwater harvesting system. It's kind of our go-to Bible for when we uh, have rainwater harvesting questions. I can't recommend those enough. And if you have any questions about our setup, about rainwater harvesting in general, leave those down below. We wanna know and we'll be happy to answer those. All right y'all, thanks so much for watching and happy harvesting.